Welcome back to Misunderstood. I'm Rachel Yucatel. No matter your age, you always want to look and feel your best. Today's guest, Dr. Michael Fiorello, gives us the scoop on the most popular surgical and non-surgical procedures out there. You might know Dr. Fiorello from The Real Housewives of New Jersey or his many guest appearances on TV talk shows, most notably as the surgeon who helped Renee Graziano from Mobwise. A top-notch surgeon for decades, he discusses how the standards of beauty have changed, what patients should be looking for in a doctor, and how social media has changed the game. We also talk about the rise of the med spa and whether it's the wave of the future. No matter how you feel about plastic surgery or injectables, I think it's clear that it's no longer taboo to get treatments and make yourself look and feel better. Sometimes a quick fix isn't just an apple a day, more sleep, more water. Sometimes you need to call the doctor. So get ready to welcome Dr. Michael Fiorello. Welcome, Dr. Michael Fiorello. I'm so happy to have you here. Thanks for having me. This is great. Yeah. Um, so the one thing that people are always going to want to talk about is how to look better and how to look younger. So you're probably going to be one of the favorite guests we always have because it's a conversation piece that everyone wants to know. Um, so before we get into the nitty gritty of all that stuff and the hard hitting questions, um, just give us a little bit of your background. Why did you want to become a doctor? Why in this field? And then give a little bit of your resume as to what you've done. Excellent. Okay, great. So, you know, I always wanted to be a doctor since uh, I was a little kid, probably since like eighth grade. So I was very fo laser focused on that. And then um, I actually went to school. I want to be a pediatrician, believe it or not. Oh, wow. Um, and when I did my rotation in pediatrics, you know, I, I, it wasn't really what I thought. It was more about dealing with like the moms. And I was like, it's really not what I wanted. So then <laughs> I was kind of trying to figure out what I want to do. Loved surgery. I loved like that instant gratification as opposed to medicine. And then um, I did general surgery first. So I did general surgery. I did five years. I'm a board certified in general surgery. Mm. And then that really didn't satisfy me enough. And then when I was looking at other specialties, when I saw plastics, I loved it because you can operate on any age person, you know, mm. newborn to, you know, 90, um, all parts of the body. So you're not limited to just face or feet or, you know, you have the whole body. So I fell in love with the specialty. And I did two years of plastic surgery. So I did general surgery and plastic surgery. And I started my practice in 1998 doing mostly reconstructive. So I was in, lived in the emergency rooms for probably a good 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, and I love that we're talking about this because it's changed so much since I started. It's, it's amazing. So when I started, there wasn't injectables. There weren't any injectables. There was wow. hardly any machines. Um, Botox was just kind of getting into the into the mix. You know, it was used for medical stuff. It wasn't really used for cosmetic. So I've kind of seen this whole evolution and and the technology and how things have really, really changed. Right, right. So how real, I just have a question. How real is Grey's Anatomy? <laughs> You know, great. And actually, I think Gray's was one of the better ones, you know, yeah. especially when you they really did a good job of of showing you how how tough it was being a resident. Yeah. I mean, because when I was a resident, it was brutal. I mean, right. I was we were on call every other night, every third night. Um, I think it's it's a lot easier now. It's kind of been changed to make it more human. But uh, mm. it was tough. I mean, right. I never slept for like seven years. Right, right, right. Oh my goodness. Okay. So let's get into plastic surgery for a, a second. You said you specialized in reconstructive at the beginning. What kind of stuff does that mean? Things that are not done right the first time, or is that people? That no. Are so I trauma? was doing um, car accidents, work mm -hmm. injuries. Like I saw some bad stuff. I mean, I did reattachments. I put fingers back on. Oh, wow. um, yeah. Real bad reconstructive dog bites, a lot of dog bites. 
Um, and then the little kids falling and getting cut. So that's kind of how I started out um, doing the reconstructive stuff. And um, and by the way, this was before Facebook and Instagram. So right. <laughs> yeah, that's making amazing. it seem like I'm making it seem like I'm really old, but it was before. <laughs> It was before all that. So it was very, very different. You know, the, the mm-hmm. world was just a way different for what I did. Um, and then all this kind of came at once, you know, social mm-hmm. media, injectables, uh, machines started coming out that actually worked, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I had a med spa pretty early on. Um, okay. And when we started, I was just doing hair removal because that was oh. like the only laser hair removal. That was like the big thing back in the day. Um, and then the market has just evolved now where everyone can afford it. It's not just surgery anymore. Um, and, and it's the, also not a secret. It, there's not a stigma to like getting right. something done, right? I feel like back then it was almost embarrassing to say that you that you had any work done or you were trying to improve yourself at all with something to be embarrassed about. Um, people, people would hide coming out of the office. They're like, no, I don't want anyone to see me. Don't t-. Yeah, it was totally different. Yeah. Um, what are your thoughts on needing to um, keep your focus in one certain area? I had um, Dr. Ryan Neinstein on. I'm, I'm not sure if you're friendly with him. Um, mm-hmm. And he really specializes from the neck down and does a lot of mommy makeovers. He doesn't want to do the face. He doesn't want to do anything else. Um, do you think it's important to specialize in one area so you're better at one thing or is being a doctor of all trades kind of just as just as good? That's a really good question. Um, I do think specializing a hundred percent um sets you apart and you become better at it so mm-hmm. for me i like to say my my big break was when i was on uh housewives in new jersey i was on season well i think season one or two i think it, I think it might have been season two um and i did a reconstru- um a redo of someone's breasts um and that, and that put you on the map and that put me on the map it kind of catapulted me into, okay, you know, this is what he's good at. So I kind of just focused mostly on breast. So that's still pretty much mostly what I do. Mm-hmm. I do breast, you know, from all, everything, all kinds of breast redos, augmentation, reduction, lifts, everything. Um, so that kind of put me on the map. I have people flying in from all over the country now um, to come in. And that leads me to like the social media aspect too. You could be the best at something. And no one knows it. So mm-hmm. at least social media, if you know you do it the right way, people can see, okay, wow, you know, I'll I'll jump on a plane or I'll drive to, to this doctor because he does the best nose or does the best butt or whatever it may be. So I think that that you know that's a that was a huge thing. And yeah. I, I'll never forget, I was very early on Facebook and I went to a plastic surgery meeting and other doctors were like almost chastising me, like you're you're putting you're putting pictures on facebook like why are you on facebook it was almost like embarrassing right oh, and then if you can, now it's like you know you can't run a practice without it right social media is so important well those before and afters i mean are so amazing and i think that's what would get you clients frankly they're like i want to yes. have that butt and i have this awful butt before or whatever you know so i think that's very helpful um you talk a lot on your website about the gummy bear breast augmentation mm-hmm. what is that and do you still do that yeah yeah so um i actually went to sweden to learn how to do it because you know the other countries i don't know if people know this like other countries don't have a rigorous fda like we do so mm-hmm. if you go to other countries they have all kinds of implants, all kinds of fillers, all kinds of machines. It's like overwhelming how much they have because they don't need to go through the FDA process like we do. So the newer implant, um, which is the gummy bear. So the silicone used to be like a liquid. It used to be filled with like, hunt, like it was like a, like syrup. And then it became cohesive where you can almost cut it in half and it doesn't leak out. So there was a doctor Ranquist in Sweden, who's done the most, I think, in the world. So I spent a week with him um, learning his technique and about the implants. And then I came back and uh, and still the best implant, I believe, is a gummy bear. And I still do, you know, usually between seven to 10 a week. Oh, wow. So and does it look any different? No, No, it's just a better implant. You know, they look more natural. They feel a little bit better. Um, Okay. 
last longer, that kind of stuff. So would you say that plastic surgery is really the only way to get those results like immediately and the best results? Yeah. So definitely surgery for certain things um, like breasts and, and tummy tucks and certain things like that and some lipo is still the way to go, right? Yeah. So right. there's still people that do need plastic surgery. And what are what are the risks associated with that? So there's always risks, obviously, of every surgery, you know, bleeding, infection, scarring, mm-hmm. poor result, um, you know, blood clots, you know, you know, people, listen, people can die. People can die and, and do die from plastic surgery, right? right. So right. the BBLs, especially in the Miami area, they had a bunch of deaths. Um, tummy but do you think that do you think that's because they're going to doctors that are not certified or they're trying to save money and they're going to Mexico? Like, wh- why do you keep hearing about things like that where people are dying? I, I think it's a combination. I think there's some bad luck involved. And I also think some people are way too aggressive. OK, you know, especially in other countries where there's no malpractice. People mm-hmm. can be super aggressive, operate on people maybe they shouldn't have operated on. Right. Um, or just or just put too much fat in the butt, you know, stuff like that. Um, it's not regulated as much as it is in the U.S. So right. I'm not here to say like, no, surgery is not good. Surgery is great. Your risks are very, very low if you're a healthy patient. Mm-hmm. Um, but when I started, that's all we had was surgery. Now there's so many other options. Yeah. Right. Um, we're going to get into that one second. My last question on this is teenage plastic surgery. How young is too young? I mean, I remember when I was young, people were talking about getting a nose job by the time they were 16. And it was like everyone was doing it. I assume now there's more of that. Um, and people are going in because they are getting bullied and they want to look different. Are you still seeing a lot of that? You know what? It's funny. I did a segment on that Um on, uh, I forget what channel, but I did a segment on that years ago. It was a big mm-hmm. thing. Um, mm-hmm. And I think that was more when social media was just coming out. Um, I don't see as much of it now. Okay. And like you said before, it's more accepted. Um, but for certain things, yes, nose, um, not really lipo so much, you know, but um, breast reduction. Mm-hmm. So there are certain things that we do do 15, 16, as long as we have parental consent. Um, but yes, that is definitely is a thing. I do still get young girls in who self-esteem is low and, and have been shamed, you know, so you have to be careful of screening and making sure they're doing it for the right reason. Yeah. Okay. So now let's get into the non-surgical stuff, because I think that that is obviously on the rise. It's something that's become so popular on social media myself. I think we talked about this a little, I've seen people change their nose, their chin back here so that they looked completely, I guess it's called snatched, but it looks like their neck and their chin. I mean, they look like a different person by the time they walk out of your office. So it almost looks like you do not have to go under the knife to get, to achieve the results that you want. And it can be immediate. What are your thoughts on that? Is that all like smoke and mirrors on social media or that's a real thing? No, it's a real, it's a real thing. So I think you have to look at each person um, individually, right? So there are some people that absolutely need a face neck lift, right? So mm-hmm. those people fall into a different category where, you know, unless they want minimal results from non-surgical, if they really want to be, you know, tight and pulled back, they need surgery. Yeah. But now, so when I started, that's all you could offer. Someone came in, you need a facelift. So now with all the fillers, all the injectables, all the machines, um, there's a lot of other options. A lot of patients are very afraid to go under anesthesia. Um, A lot of people can't afford it. I mean, as we spoke about, there are some doctors in the city charging $200,000 for a facelift. Yeah. Um, That's not in everyone's budget, right? So and wait, just on that topic for one second. I mean, I know we've, as we said, there are some guys we know in New York and LA that will charge over 200,000. Is it one of those things where you get what you pay for. Do you need to spend that much money to have a deep plane facelift? Um, or, you know, w- w- is that realistic? You know, I'm sure there's a lot of people that do a good facelift, like the 7,000 plastic surgeons in the country, right? Mm. So there's not just one or two people that can do it. There's a lot of people that can do it. Uh, but, you know, you're, you're, if you want to pay that money because you know this person's really good and, and, and does a great job, 
yeah, I get it. If that's in your budget and you can afford it, yeah. And you feel like that person's the best. But there well, are a lot of the best that they've done more training than anyone else, or because as a doctor, aren't you trained to do this kind of facial and everyone gets the same training and then you go off and kind of make it your own? I mean, what makes someone the best? Yeah, that's a really that's a really good question. I guess the volume and the before and afters. Um, but listen, there's there's not one person that can do it. And who knows who's the best, right? We always have this discussion. There could be a doctor somewhere in the Midwest that does a better facelift than, than anybody. We don't know about it. But just doesn't have a good social media uh, advisor. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. I mean, exactly. So it's right. Patience, volume, experience. And listen, even someone who, who puts himself out there as the best, we could, we all have complications, right? I yeah. mean, it can happen. Right. So, so I think that you have to do your homework when it comes to that and you can't believe everything you're seeing. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Um, all right. So let's go through some of the treatments that people can get if they do not want to have surgery. Cause I think, uh, everyone, you know, has been familiar with these at some point in their life. Okay. Mm -hmm. Botox. It's now mm -hmm. not just used for wrinkles anymore. What are you seeing with the trends with bo Botox? So Botox is, you know, still mostly the wrinkle reducer, right? So we do these area forehead in between mm -hmm. eyes here. You can do it for slimming the jaw. We also do a little bit for the, for a lift in the neck. So that's, mm -hmm. that's something you can do as well. It works for underarm sweating. Mm-hmm. Uh, stop sweating for about a year. We also put it in with microneedling and we can do the whole face with a little bit of, of Botox and it just gives you like the sheen, like mm. a nice shine. So um, we also do lip flip. Do you do a little dot and kind of lifts your lip up a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of things you can do with Botox and Botox now is being injected by like, so it started with plastic surgery and dermatologists. Mm -hmm. And now some of the busiest injectors in the country are nurses mm -hmm. and just MDs that don't, you know, that aren't plastic surgeons or dermatologists. So that is changed in the market tremendously. Oh, wow. Okay. And is it true that it can help with um, migraine headaches? Yeah. Yeah. And that's in, improved by insurance. So it's usually the neurologists. Um, they, they kind of inject it all the way around in the neck, the top, back. But yeah, it works great for migraines. Hmm. Okay. And as we all seen though, people can inject too much and you get a frozen face and sort of look ridiculous. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, listen, you know, every nurse that graduates nursing school now wants to go in the, into this field, right? It's a great field. And I get called every week by someone looking for work and and I get it. It's a great field. Um, but you can take a weekend course and, and come out and start injecting. So oh, wow. it happens, right? So there's a learning curve for sure. So it's nice to go to someone that's been injecting for a long time, knows how to inject it. Um, uh, the worst thing you can see is like where the eye shuts and can't open. It's temporary, yeah. goes away, goes away, but can happen. So you have I've to had it where my mouth stops to smile on one side. Yeah. <laughs> that, that was pretty awful. Yeah. So fortunately, the complications are minimal with mm -hmm. Botox. And it doesn't, you know, it lasts four months. Right. Yeah. And during the pandemic, I feel like so many people out mm -hmm. of the woodwork got trained to do this because you saw all these concierge services pop up yep. and it's people that have never worked in an office before in their life. And now they're just traveling from every, you know, home to home and injecting people. Um, do you, you know, what is the training like to go into using things like this? Should we trust people that are doing those services or should we be going to real? I would still say go, doctor? go to a, yeah, I would still say go to a board certified doctor. I, I still think that's the way to go. Um, nurses. Yes. They, they, they have some very good nurse injectors, um, nurse practitioners. Um, so definitely go to someone that is, that is at a higher level that has experience more than just taking a weekend course. Right. Okay. Um, okay. Let's talk about fillers. Um, as we mentioned, you can change your nose, your jaw, um, all this stuff. What, what are the things that really stand out to you that change someone's face? Absolutely. So part of the aging process, right? We lose collagen and we also gravity kind of pulls things down. So mm -hmm. we like to volumize and lift. So it's the analogy of like the balloon, right? If you let half the air out of a balloon, it's like crinkly and soft mm -hmm. and then you fill it up. It's like shiny again. So there's a fine line between too much 
Yeah. Right. We don't want to make someone look like really, really swollen, but to fill and lift. So usually, you know, a little under the eyes. I like doing the cheeks. I like to volumize out this way. We used to, when it first came out, it was just here. We used to just put it here. And now we barely put anything here. We try and volumize this way, like pulling up. Right. Um, when I started, there was no fillers. So we used to use fat. Oh. So we used to take fat out from wherever, and then we would use the fat like a filler. And does um, that dissolve too? You know, it would. It, some of it dissolves, but some would be permanent. Some would last. There are still people, doctors out there that still do fat. Um, but when the fillers came, they were just so nice and and yeah. and uh, and easy and and people loved them so now there's so many fillers on the market i feel like every year a new filler comes out yeah i was gonna but, say how do people know which one to use yeah, right yeah you, you, right exactly it's very confusing and like i said if you go to europe there's like hundreds of fillers um right. so you have to basically pick I, like what i do i pick two or three that i really like that i know work well last and um this is one area, though, that you do have to be careful because okay. if it's injected into an artery and occludes it, you can get skin loss. And I have seen that. Oh, wow. I okay. have seen it. So that is something that you need to be very careful. You don't want to go to, to a gym or to just a you know home, like you said, or somewhere. Um, there's a whole protocol that you need to have on board in case it's put in the wrong area. There's there's something to dissolve it, which you need to put in immediately, and there's a whole protocol. So when it comes to fillers, um, you have to be careful. There, there's also every year reports of blindness. Wow. Yeah. And I've always been curious, is it based on, you know, like the pharmaceutical rep who's coming to your office and just pitching you stuff? Or are you guys, you know, seeing the gamut of what's out there and really saying, oh, I want these two types? And these other ones I don't care about, no matter what hot girl comes in here and pitches it to me. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a good point, right? Because that, that definitely goes on. You're right. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's just what you're used to using and 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 what's been around. Like, so I, you know, listen, wrestling's been around now the longest. I love, I still love wrestling. Everything else is kind of based off, it's they're all hyaluronic acid. Mm. So, so they can like be dissolved. Most, it can be dissolved. Yeah. Which is the big thing. Correct. Mm. Yeah. So that okay. does help. But this wasn't available years ago. So getting back to my point, if someone comes in, they they aren't too, you know, too loose and they don't have the money to spend and they don't want to be cut open and they don't want the risk of anesthesia. Now, between the fillers, Botox, and I guess we can talk about the machines uh, next. Yeah. You can you can get a nice look. Yeah. Um, I will notice though, or I will say I have been to some dermatologists who charge even more than plastic surgery. I mean, I've been quoted for just doing some jaw, chin, I mean, um, cheeks, eye filler, and the price became, you know, over $10,000 between 10 and wow. 15. Yeah. Based on the fact that she was a well-known person and had a major social media platform, like you're talking about a lot of before and afters. And I was thinking to myself, I could get a whole facelift for this. <laughs> this is kind of crazy. So right. yeah, prices that, do vary. That, that is true, right? So you have to really look at it that way as well. Good facelift should last 10 years. Yeah. Um, you know, but it, listen, if you do a facelift, you still may want to get Botox. You still might want to do your lips. So there's still. Yeah. You know, so it's not a, okay. it's not a fix that's permanent forever. You still have to do a little maintenance. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So um, let's get into the lasers for one second. I'm always like so skeptical of them, but I always want to do them. I love the, is it um, vampire facial, the PRP, something like that, yeah. where they spin your blood and put on your yeah. face. The next day, I don't have to wear makeup. I feel like I look, my skin looks so good, but then I'm a sun worshiper. So I go back out in the sun and I ruin it all. But I happen to love that one. Is that just me or is that a good one? No, I love it too. I, I do too. It's it's great. I love the PRP. It's awesome. Yeah. I think it's great. You know, there's studies behind it. Um, it's your own blood. Um, works. It definitely. It definitely helps um, build up some collagen and, and um, there's no doubt that it works. Mm -hmm. um so you have basically the outside of the skin that kind of stuff you can do you can do the prp microneedling and then the lasers we have ones that that it's like an eraser it'll just clear all the dark and red spots off and oh, then also get rid of the fine lines and wrinkles 
So okay. there's there's so many different ones out there, but those just do the outside of the skin. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of those that you can do, and they they they'll make your skin look really really nice. Name then you have one the, name one type so that we can. Oh, so what we do here is the, it's a Cyton laser, and it's called the Halo. Okay. Um, and I think the Halo is probably one of the better ones around. Um, but how this, painful this, are those? This tolerable. We just do a local local anesthesia, um, topical. Sometimes we can inject it if if someone's really sensitive. But so it's usually, not like Fraxel used to be, where it was so like unbearable. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, similar to Fraxel, but maybe the next level up. Got it. Okay. Um, okay. Oh, do you believe in like um, IPL and that kind of stuff? Yeah. Yeah. So yes. Yeah. So the IPL or the broadband light works great for the for dark spots, pigment, yeah, uh, that sort of stuff. Real nice face, neck too. Like women have this, and then sometimes in the back of the hands works yeah. good. I, I love it. I think it looks great. You have to deal with looking like you have coffee grounds all over you for a little right. bit, but right. freckles are in. You know, they have these new. Fi- um, things on social media where you can get fake freckles. So uh, people right. love it. Um, okay. Now the one I want to ask about is the body sculpting. I know you do a lot of cool sculpt, but I know, yes. you know, Linda Evangelista made it a whole problem when she said it left her disfigured. So what do you think happened to her and wh- why do you like it so much? So we've been doing cool sculpt since it came out. Um, we, uh, you know, I have multiple machines and it works great. I mean, um, you're getting about a 20, 20- two percent reduction it's 30 minute treatment and the studies absolutely show that it works Mm -hmm. so the cold basically blows up the fat cells and once that fat cell is gone it's gone um there is a complication known as pih which i believe she had and what happens is is a suction and a freezing so it pulls everything out sucks it every sucks all the fat into this device freezes it for 30 minutes sometimes the cells don't explode and stay big so it has a reverse effect i've seen that twice in in like 15 years that i've had it it's extremely oh. rare if that happens the company at least will pay for you to then get liposuction um Got so it. we lipo it out and then it actually looks even better um but yes i feel like there's risks with almost anything but it's very low. Okay. And cool sculpt really freezes the fat. I mean, obviously that's different than these people that go into like the freezing cold water and sit there for a few minutes. Right, I mean, it exactly. really targets the fat and works on that. Is that the same as Vanquish? So the Vanquish is a heating device. Oh, so the okay. heating kind of does the same thing as the um as a cool sculpt. So there are machines out there that do that. Um, the M sculpts, the other one, which does that as well as tighten the muscle. So there's a lot of body machines now. Um, I don't want to say as good as lipo, but if you're in good shape and you, and you have a bulge, you know, maybe your flanks or a little bulge in the pubic area or your neck, um, and you're happy with a 20% reduction, that is very, very low risk, 30 minutes to do, um, nice alternative. Okay. I want to talk about the M sculpt for a second. So there's the M sculpt Neo now, right? Mm-hmm, yeah. I've tried it. I've I'm on my like fifth session. Um, and I did I did my butt and my stomach. And explain to people the difference. I mean, it's about building muscle, it's not about freezing or heating anything, right? Yeah, well, okay. So the Neo has two applications. Mm-hmm. There's um radio frequency, which helps tighten the skin and does get rid of a little fat. Okay. And then there's the muscle part that builds the muscle. Right. So, now, I love that. Yeah, it's cool. And and the butt, obviously, you don't turn that part on. You just do the muscle building to the butt. Right. So we don't for want- me, because I'm already somewhat small, um, you know, I and I am a skinny girl, so I have this flat butt. And before I wanted to, like, try to do this BBL or whatever, I was like, let me try this. It, it's actually working on my butt. Yeah, it's pretty cool. After a very short amount of time. So I was really shocked about it. Um, And then on my stomach, 
it it's actually really helped as well. I mean, I have a pretty flat stomach to begin with, but I now see muscle and I saw it after the first treatment, frankly. Um, and I actually noticed that I feel a little stronger. Like when I do go to the gym since I've noticed I can hold like a plank longer, I can do squats a little more. So I am not someone who believes in this stuff really, but I actually would say that I love it and I'm going to buy another package because I think it's great. Yeah. So so there you go. Like, you know, that's a good example, right? So the BBLs got so popular, right? Mm -hmm. But it's a risky procedure. It comes with a risk, right? And the, the risk is not a good one. The risk is death, mm -hmm. right? So if the fat that you're injecting back into the butt gets into a vessel, you, you can have a problem. Um, mm -hmm. There's a lot of plastic surgeons that won't even do it anymore. Now, oh, okay, wow. Well, it's a, it's it, it's safe, right? But there, it comes with a higher risk than most other things. Right. Mm -hmm. So I mean, chances are you're going to be fine, but there is a small risk. So some people just say, I don't want to do that or they don't have enough fat. So now we can do a BBL with Sculptra so we can inject the butt right with a filler mm -hmm. and then do the M sculpt. So now right. you'll definitely get an enhancement. It's not going to be a, you know, a big, huge butt. Right. But you, you're going to get an enhancement at a fraction of the cost and very, very low risk. Yeah. So talk to me about filling in the butt because I see this all over social media and some of them to me are like too much and some look perfect. They're just a little bit of a lift, but I know how much filler it takes just to do small parts of your face. I mean, that's a lot of filler, right? Yeah. Yeah, it is a lot. So um, it's expensive and it only lasts like a year and a half or a year, year. So it, a lot of people don't do it, mm -hmm. but it is definitely an option. So you can put sculpture in and, it, and it works. It gives you a good oh, yeah. result. Oh yeah, yeah. As long as you're not looking for the, you know, the Betty Boop, the small waist and the huge butt. Right. You know, that is like fat. Um, right. But that's you know, there's risks with that. I mean, we I've seen a lot of problems with that, especially women that go out of the country to get it done. Mm, right. Um, and can filling in around the butt help with cellulite as well? I've seen that yeah. on social yeah, media. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, because it kind of pu pulls it out. Right. Um, is there a cure for cellulite? I know they mm -hmm. um, have endermology clinics where basically it's almost like pulling of the muscle and it's like a deep tissue massage. Do you think that works? I don't. And I don't do it here because I've tried everything. I think cellulite's the hardest thing to get rid of. Mm -hmm. um, very tedious. So that's one thing that I don't do because I, I like to do stuff where, where people get results. Yeah. Um, so maybe other people have good results with it. I've never really seen anything that works great for it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, people say water. I don't know. We hate to waste people's money. You know, that's one thing we don't do. Yeah. No, I appreciate that. Okay. So we see all these commercials for creams that are just going to change your face and your body and your skin. Do you believe in creams? You know, for maintenance, yes. Okay. But there's no miracle wrinkle you know, treatment. No. No, I think you need a good skincare regimen, sun avoidance, obviously, smoking avoidance, and then maintenance. You know, it, it's interesting because I've had um, twin sisters and I've had one that's been coming to me for 20 years and one that I recently met has never done anything. And it's a, you could see um, a huge difference, right? Oh, wow. So there's a, yeah, oh yeah, it was dramatic. So there's a lot to be said for maintenance. Um, like when a you know twenty year old girl comes in and, in her twenties and says, "I want to do preventative." I mean, I, I'm not that aggressive where I, where I would say to do anything. No, but I do think that if you that it makes a huge difference if you stay on top of it. Good skincare, sun avoidance, um, do do facials, and then when, when you're in your late thirties, forties, start doing some of the skin tightening um, laser devices. Makes a big difference. Okay. So we've been talking about things kind of on the outside of your skin, things that you can inject in, whatever. What are your thoughts on anti-aging? You know, people doing this stem cell stuff, this hormone replacement um, therapy. Do you have something that you believe in? So I don't, I don't offer that here, but um, I do believe, I do believe in it. Um, okay. You know, it, it's not well accepted yet. Right. I feel like it's in Europe a lot. People are flying yes. there to do it, to, you know, help themselves if they have some sickness. And then some people who really just do not want to age uh, have been flying to places to to get some sort of treatments. 
Yeah, so that that's actually a, a newer area. There's not so many studies on it. Um, there is definitely a lot to it, and it, to me, it's a growing field, okay. right? I mean, obviously, if you give any man testosterone, he's going to feel great. You know, he's he's going to love it. But we don't know the long term effects of it. Um, I have a lot of female patients also on hormones. It, it's putting off their menopause. They're feeling better, um, better sex drive, um, more muscular. So there's definitely, definitely a place for it. I, I just think there's not enough information on it right now. But I do believe in hormone therapy, but I think we just need more information on it. Got it. Okay. And the things you're talking about for women, is that something you have there or something you can recommend? I usually refer them out okay. to someone because I think women women are a lot trickier. There's a lot more going on. You know, men is testosterone pretty much. That's it. But women need to find a nice balance you know, of hormones. Right. Um, and speaking about hormones for a second and weight, wh what do you think about this Ozempic craze? I feel like it's, oh, that's, it, it that's plateaued cool. for a while. Uh, like where, where are we with that? So it's, uh, that's great. You brought that up. So for years and years and years, you know how much surgery I would turn down. So my typical woman comes in five to you know, 200 pounds. Mm -hmm. And I would always say, listen, you're not a candidate for surgery or liposuction. You know, people would come in 50 pounds overweight and say, can I get lipo? When we do liposuction, we don't take off more than four or five pounds. No and matter you who you are and how much you have. Yeah, I mean, mostly for safety reasons too, right? I mean, mm -hmm. there, there's legal limits in each state of how much you can take off. And it's just not, it's just not safe. It's, it's, it's not for weight loss. Mm. So I would always tell patients, people would come in, you know, I'm heavy, I want liposuction. You know, you're like, well, listen, you need to lose weight. And same thing for tummy tuck. So there's certain BMIs we don't want to operate on. So 32 is usually my cutoff. If your BMI is higher than 32, we don't want to operate because the complications go up, infection, skin loss, all sorts of stuff, blood clots. So for years and years and years, we tell people, you know, you need to lose 40, 50 pounds and come back. Well, guess what? They never came back, you know? So, and I used to always say, I mean, why can't they come up with a pill for weight loss? Um, so now finally, uh, it's happening. So you have Ozempic, the Wagovia, and now Eli Lilly is coming out with a pill form, um, because a lot of people don't like to give themselves the shot once, once mm -hmm. a week. So huge. It's huge. It's huge. It really is. We're seeing a lot of people now coming in that are closer to their ideal body weight. And now they can get surgery. Okay, so, so you're not so against it, it sounds like, because I know no. some people were like, oh, it's freezing people's stomachs and it's making people so sick. And so if it's injected or taken the right way, you think it could be a great um, assistance in weight loss? I totally, totally agree. I okay. mean, it's basically killing your appetite. So if, if I'm a big believer in fasting, um, but some people just can't do it. Yeah, yeah. And the, other interesting, Go ahead. the other interesting thing about it is now they're talking about micro dosing it. Oh, so it just kind of keeps your appetite kind of flat. So it's not like you have massive weight loss, but it just gets micro dosing it to just get rid of those crazy urges. Yeah. 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 So it's, it's interesting. I mean, I think we're not at a place where people can be accepting of uh, if you're on Ozempic or not yet. I mean, people seem to get canceled for it or there's so many like people who are denying being on it who obviously are. And, you know, I think we'll eventually get to a point where that's accepted because it works so well and we've seen it work it so well with people. It, I agree. Totally. Yeah. Um, okay. The other um, thing I wanted to ask about anti-aging is these drips. There are so many med spas that have something called NAD, NAD. What is that? Yeah. Yeah. So that's interesting. So that is, um, um, I don't know if you ever listened to any of the Dr. Sinclair stuff out of Harvard. So he's probably the authority now on anti-aging. Okay. Um, and uh, he, he's got great podcasts. I recommend if anyone's interested in this to listen to his podcast. He's like the authority out of Harvard on it. Um, and this is supposed to re, um, rebuild your mitochondria, help with anti-aging. Um, there's a lot of studies on it, NMN. So if you, if you research him, he kind of explains it really thoroughly and, uh, and it's nice. Um, so this is um this is a substance a newer substance that that's, that helps with aging. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the, have yeah, you tried it? Now, do you think it works? Yeah, that's another. That's they do, and that's another thing that that I've seen an evolution because when I started, 
um, we had um, a drip that you could get um, for like cold and flu season, right? It was mm -hmm. called a Myers cocktail and it was vitamin C and some amino acids and vitamins. Or for a hangover, I think became really popular. Then it'd be, right, right. So <laughs> if you go to Vegas, you know, they have these drips that'll come to your room and put a drip in. And mm -hmm. um, so I, I do think it helps for sure. Um, I think if you have a nice balanced, well-balanced diet, I don't know how much it's doing for you, uh, but certain, some of these drips, for example, if I have a patient that comes in for surgery, I always recommend they get a drip before and after if they can. And mm -hmm. I, I do, definitely notice a difference. They bruise less, they recover quicker. Um, so that's another area that I think is nice. Would I do it routinely? I don't know. I think if you have a well-balanced diet, you exercise, you take a multivitamin, you probably don't need it. But I think during stressful times, if you're sick, hungover, getting it surgery. It can boost your immunity. Yes. Got it. Um, okay. So I know people are going to want to talk for a second about celebrities that you've done. You've been in the news a lot for different people that you've worked on, or you've been somebody that has been on different shows talking about celebrities and plastic surgery. And as you said, being on the housewives of New Jersey kind of puts you on the map. So can you talk just briefly about some of the celebrities that you, um, have worked on and how you have, you know, I know speaking to, um, Renee from mob wives, she said that you, yeah you changed her life. She's going to be on the show in a couple of weeks. And, um, oh, really? yeah. And she had she's... nothing but nice things to say about you. So. Awesome. She's great. <laughs> well, you know, it's getting back to what we talked about before, right? So this, this some, some doctors just get that, get that name and they're charging exorbitant amounts. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, listen, I think I'm good at what I do, but there's also thousands of other guys that are probably just as good. Right. So mm -hmm. I think, I think the bottom line there is like, if you can connect with with someone, you have a certain specialty. Like I feel like when it comes to breast, that I can do, I can do really really good job. I'm really passionate about it. I do a lot of it. That's pretty much all I do now is breast and, and tummies. Um, so I do think that it is kind of nice to 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 get the word out there. So being on a lot of these shows was great for me, you know, to get the word out and. Um, as far as the celebrity stuff, yeah, it's, it is interesting. I mean, I've done a lot of people that I've signed NDAs to, so, you know, of you course. can't say, but, but I will say that it's definitely a different mindset, but it kind of plays with you a little bit too, because every, you have to treat everybody the same. Um, and I've had, I had a patient yesterday say, oh, well, he, he, you know, I'm not a celebrity. He only wants to operate on celebrities, which is not mm -hmm. true. Right? right. So I treat everybody, treat everybody the same, but I was fortunate enough to have been on shows and have done some high profile people. And it's, it's great. Yeah. And I guess that makes you, would make you a little more nervous anyways, because people have to look at your work and know it's you that did that work. So you got to do a good job, right? <laughs> yeah. A hundred percent, especially when you're operating on camera. Right. Yeah. It's a yeah. little, you know, but I try and do a little, I try and do some of that on TikTok too. So yeah. I can use it more as like an educational thing mm -hmm. because sometimes when I, when I, when I showed me operating, I do get a lot of people saying, don't show this. I don't want to see it. Um, and then some people love it. Right. So I think you have to be careful. There's a fine line, but I do think it's more about education. Like I think the mob wise was great because the way I found Renee was she had a complication, mm -hmm. um, which can happen, right? You know, um, and then I kind of came in and helped her out. Um, so I think also a lot of people maybe will do stuff just to get the celebrity maybe they, when they shouldn't. So right. I try to keep, keep it all in perspective. You know, I treat everybody the same and, and, and go for the best result you can. Do people come in and ask you for a certain celebrity or sometimes show you a picture of what they want to look like? Yes. <laughs> Is there yeah. one particular celebrity who they all want to look like? So it, it's funny you say that. So it went from Pam Anderson when I started, right? Everybody wanted Pam Anderson's boobs. Then it went to um, Angelina Jolie, Baywatch. probably. Oh. And, oh, yeah, totally. Angelina Jolie's lips. Right. Um, then it went to the other Baywatch girl. Um, why am I blanking on her name? Um, oh, um, Yasmin. Yasmin. Yep. Um, She's very pretty. Yasmin Blue. Yeah, remember her? Right. And then then it went, of course, to Kim Kardashian. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so it's All kind of different, changed. different looks. That's interesting. Yeah. And lately I get a lot of Emily Rajakowski. 
and then I get um, also um, some of the influencers. So mm. it, it's kind of changed throughout the years. And, right. you know, one one interesting thing, which I think is funny, was I used to liposuction out girls' butts because they were too big. And they wanted them smaller. Mm-hmm. And, and now you know, that's 25 years ago. Yeah, now they want them bigger. So yeah. it's funny how things how things change. But yes, I, especially with boobs, I get girls coming all the time. I want these my boobs look like you know, these. Right, right. Yeah, the standard of beauty is so different and always ever changing. Um, I want to ask you a question about filters because I noticed that when I have certain filters on my phone, I look like a supermodel. It is so fun. And you can even see on these um, you know, TikToks that people show their, you know, they're talking to you from their filter personality and then they take it off and they just look like a I mean, not that there's anything wrong with it, but a plain person, right? So do people ever come in? and show you what they look like with filters and say, I want to look like that. Cause I sort of want to do that. I want to go to a doctor's office and say, what is, cause I can't figure out what it is on those filters. That's making me look so good. What, what is it? I, listen, I, when they say that, I say, find a good makeup artist. Yeah. Because, because I think that's the only way to, the way to look that good. But right. uh, it's so funny. You say that too. Like, you know, I don't know how people date these days. Thank God I don't have to do the online dating. Cause no <laughs> one looks like nobody looks like they do. They, I, you know, I see them online because I'll Instagram, a lot of people will message, say, Hey, I'm interested. And then they come in and, and, um, people look very different. Yeah. Um, I, I agree with you, but you know, that, that's the thing now. Everyone wants to look better. Right. It's funny that you say that because I always tell people that they should put less attractive pictures of themselves online and definitely not filtered because then you can surprise them in person when you have some good makeup on or a good outfit <laughs> and with your personality, you could look so much better. Right. But if yeah. you, if you go out there with this filtered look and then you show up as you who might be beautiful, but they are not expecting that you really ruin it for yourself. So I I totally agree. I think that's a difficult, uh, slippery slope. Um, okay. So let's talk about where this, um, this medical industry is going. Um, they're joining together forces, the plastic surgery departments, the dermatologists, um, they're all coming together, the med spa people into one unit. Talk about that. So the re- the reason why this field is so hot, so the med spa business is literally like soaring, right? Which I, I can't believe it still is, but it's growing at about 15% a year. Um, so the banks and private equity and, 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 and money people are starting to realize the opportunities here. So mm-hmm. just like a lot of other industries that have kind of rolled up and, and, um, and come together. That's happening now in the plastic surgery world and in the uh, med spa world. And I think now since everything is cash, right, there's no more insurance. It's just become a really good business. Um, So private equity and banks have noticed that and are now buying practices and buying med spas and kind of joining uh, forces. Mm -hmm. So the industry is really now just absolutely taking off. It's like it's like one of the hottest industries that's out there now. So everyone wants to open up a med spa. Everyone wants to work in a med spa. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think that um, you're going to see a big consolidation now um, into into that space. And that's kind of what's going on. It's a recurring business, right? So most people that get Botox and fillers, they're going to come. They're going to come every four months or every six months, just like getting your hair cut or your hair Mm -hmm. done or nails, you know, et cetera. Um, So it's become now a big a huge market. Right. And yeah. then at a certain age after that, they're going to want to upgrade to that facelift when they're ready and a little bit older, and then they're going to need some maintenance after the fact. So it encompasses all of it. Um, do you think that, um, we talked about this a little bit off camera, but do you think that'll affect the customer service because it's a much bigger location offering much more services? Um, can people still feel like they are um, getting the treatment and the, um, you know, the, the one-on-one um, experience that they are looking for from a smaller I, company? I, I, I think so. I mean, I think it's going to, it's going to make the, um, the pricing better probably for patients. It, it's more right. commonplace. Uh, it's going to be more accepted and there's, there's going to be, you know, a lot more locations popping up. I mean, man, just around me, I mean, I think I was a, I'm pretty sure I was the first one here in 98 to have a, a med spa and um, 1998 and there has to be 30 now. I mean, within probably, you know, half an hour drive, um, yeah. they're popping up absolutely everywhere. So 
yeah, there'll there'll be a little bit shift in the market, and, and I do think that you know there'll be top practices, and there'll be some maybe not as good for sure, mm -hmm. like everything else. But okay. I but I do think that this is now you know part of our life, and and people want to look better and feel better. And just in the last twenty years, um, it's gotten so much better. Mm -hmm. um, even men now are starting to come in. You know, PRP for the hair, Botox, the M sculpt we talked about. Men are doing that. So. When I started, you wouldn't really see many men here. Now we see a lot of men coming in too. Right. Um, so I think the whole industry is becoming, still growing at a rapid rate and becoming more commonplace. If you are going to spend your money um, on one treatment, what is the one treatment um, that you would say is really helpful in gaining that sort of immediate younger appearance? Would it be something that has to do with lasers, injectables, or is it something with the body? Um, sculpting i mean i would probably still say botox because it's such a instant result you know in four days three four days it kicks in i would probably say that's still probably the number one go-to okay um i would say lips too especially a lot of the younger younger girls are coming in now for lips i think that's an that's an instant thing good bang for your buck you know you you do it you're done it lasts a, a pretty long time uh, I think that's good. Um, but there's just so many, there's so many machines now. There's so many things that actually work now. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, okay. Last two questions. What do you see being the new up and coming trend in the future? Like we talked about beauties, the, the, you know, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but used to be very skinny and Victoria's secret models. Now it's more athletic, fuller body. You know, people don't necessarily care as much about being stick thin. Um, where do you see this going in the future for a trend? Um, I, I kind of, I don't really see any huge trend coming up now. I would, if I didn't say anything, I would say a little more conservative, right? Boobs more aren't natural. As, more natural. Boobs aren't as big. Butts aren't as big not as much filler. So I think, I think in a way it, some people it got a bad name because people look at these huge butts and these huge lips and, and some people go, Ooh, what, you know, but there's a lot of people that have it done that you don't know they have it done. Right. So I think the trend is a little bit more conservative. Women are still yeah. getting breast implants, just not as big, right? They're still doing their butts, but they're not make, blowing them out like crazy. Um, so I, I think more conservative and more natural looking. And I agree because I think, you know, there's not as much of a stigma with aging. I mean, listen, I'm 48. I'm not trying to compete with a 25 year old girl. I, sh I, somebody in my age bracket should try and look their best at their age, as opposed to <clears throat> trying to ignore the fact that they're aging and try and look much younger. Um, and I think that's historically been a problem that women um, have gone through because they don't want to admit that they're aging. Right. So I think as long as women, um, have now gotten to the point where they're happier in their own skin and it's okay to be the age that you are, you just want to look a little bit better at that age. But I think people are embracing their age a little more than we used to. I think so too. And, you know, I've done a lot of women in their seventies, like in the last couple of years. And, um, a lot of women will come in and, and say, am I too old? And I'm saying, no, you're healthy. You know, some maybe are like recently widowed and they, and they want to go, you know, go back and date or they're just active and, and said, well, I don't want to live without implants. Why not? You know? And so I've done a lot of women in their seventies and um, it, it's fine. And I, I love oh, it. I you love know? that. I love yeah. that. Women, people should never give up <laughs> on, I, their, totally, on their totally look. Um, okay. Last question. What, um, what do you see? We talked about trends, but like, is there something in the future that you have your eye on? whether it's a, a different kind of service or whatever that you think might be interesting that you want to do more research on? So I'm looking into getting this machine called the soft wave, which is um, kind of like all therapy. It's the next step up. Um, I, I always like to see how things work before I buy machines, mm -hmm. um, but I'm definitely looking into more of the skin tightening. Um, belly too. There's a lot of women that hate it from the breast down to their belly button. That area above the belly button is a little bit loose, especially if you're fit and you're muscular and then that skin. And there's not a good treatment for that. Can't really pull up. A lot of women come say, can you just pull it up? Which yeah. you can't really do. So I'm looking for more skin tightening machines that actually work and tighten things up. 
because well, that work on the neck. I always don't yeah. understand why you guys can't just cut my neck in the back I and know, pull right? it together. I pull it this way. I know. Yeah. I know. So, so I'm looking for more of that. Exactly. The neck's a problem area, the belly, especially the top part of the belly. Um, women with the knees, some the women knees. hate have loose skin around the knees. Yeah. So, you know, I'm looking for more stuff that's tightening skin. Awesome. Okay. Um, where can people find you? So I'm in New York and New Jersey. I'm in Englewood Cliffs, New Jersey and Pearl River, New York. Okay. Um, you know, um, social media and so, you know, the usual stuff there. And well, uh, uh, just tell people what your social media is if they're not watching. So it's it. just DR Fiorillo, just with my name on the screen. Um, okay. You can find me on Instagram and I'll give you all the info uh, you need. And, um, and are you going to be expanding down to other cities? Yeah. So, so basically I'm part of um, a roll up called uh, short amp, which is um, aesthetic medical partners. And we're at 57 locations now. Oh, wow. Yep. So I, I, I do want to migrate down to Florida eventually. I'm down there a lot anyway, but I do want to start seeing patients down there eventually. Um, and we're growing. We're looking to have over 100 locations by uh, next year. And I, I think that is nice because collaborating, exchanging ideas. Um, for years, I was here by myself. Mm -hmm. And it was great. But there's nothing like being with a big group, yeah. you know, because uh, someone may may do a better, you know, neck or a better nose or a better this or that. So it's nice to be able to share and, and everybody um, has their expertise. Yeah, for sure. All right. Well, I can't wait. When you come down to Florida, I will be patient number one awesome. and uh, <laughs> and we'll go from there. But thank you so much, um, Dr. Fiorello. You are such a pleasure to talk to. And um, we will, um, you know, have you back to talk more about um, new and changing things as they come out. So thank you. Thank you. That was great. I appreciate it. Of course. Thank you so much for listening to Misunderstood. I'm your host, Rachel Yucatel. Please be sure to subscribe to the show and give us a five-star rating and review. You can support the show by joining our Patreon at patreon.com slash misunderstood with Rachel Yucatel. Do you have ideas for the show or want to reach out? Email us at info misunderstood podcast at gmail.com. That's spelled M-I-S-S -S, understood. Thank you so much and I'll see you next time. Misunderstood.